Well, the Black Death is an epidemic on an unimaginable scale, which swept across Europe in the mid 14th century, killing, we now believe, and the records are very good, up to half of the population, one in two of the population, in the space of seven years. For nearly 700 years, we thought we knew the story, a shadow rising from the east that plunged an entire continent into darkness. The Black Death, a pandemic so devastating that it forever changed the course of human history, wiping out more than half of Europe's population in just a few short years. It's a story of fear of invisible death creeping from door to door and of a mystery that haunted generations. Where did this apocalyptic plague really come from? For decades, historians and scientists have pointed to various places on the map, often toward China or somewhere deep in Asia, yet hard evidence was always missing. The Black Death seemed to appear out of nowhere, a sudden, violent storm that struck Europe in 1347 and left behind unimaginable destruction. But what if the beginning of this story didn't lie in 1347? What if the key to solving this centuries-old mystery was hidden all along not in ancient manuscripts, but in forgotten graves and in the DNA of the victims themselves? A recent breakthrough has finally revealed the true origin story, and it's more complex and fascinating than anyone ever imagined. The traditional account of the Black Death is one of pure horror. Ships docking in Sicilian ports, their crews dying, bodies covered in dark, swollen lymph nodes, the infamous buboes. It's caused by a bacterium. Um, which is called Yersinia pestis. The bacterium evolved actually from a harmless, um, non-pathogenic bacterium that normally lives in the soil. From there, the disease caused by the bacterium, Yersinia pestis, spread like wildfire, relentless and unstoppable. Cities turned into mass graves. Social order collapsed, and fear was the only constant. But one question continued to haunt scientists, not just what the Black Death did, but where it began. It was clear that the bacterium traveled along trade routes. But the, the pathogenic Yersinia pestis is spread by fleas, which in turn are spread by rats. It's believed that the rats um, moved around on uh, ships and as part of trade at the time. Likely hitching rides on fleas living on black rats, but where did that journey start? It starts out in Kyrgyzstan, but Kyrgyzstan is a very important place in the medieval world because it's smack dab in the middle of the Silk Roads. So you've got lots of caravans coming through, and the plague is able to spread from the people there who have it onto the caravans and begin moving back and forth east and west. So it begins to make its way slowly into China and into Europe. It gets into Europe about nine years later. So about 1347, it first happens in Italy. Uh, and we think about December 1347 for that. The search for the origin seemed to hit a dead end until researchers dug deeper into forgotten archives and stumbled upon an almost overlooked clue. Gathering dust in historical records were reports of Russian excavations from the 1,880 seconds in a remote valley in Central Asia, near Lake Isik Kul, in what is now Kyrgyzstan. Archaeologists discovered two cemeteries with an unusually high number of burials from the years 1,338 and 1,339, nearly a decade before the Black Death reached Europe. Even more remarkable were the inscriptions on some of the gravestones. Written in Syriac was a single chilling word, motana, meaning pestilence. This was a community struck by a deadly epidemic years before Europe's great outbreak. For decades, it remained an intriguing but unproven theory. Was this pestilence really the Black Death or some unrelated disease? The gravestones spoke, but they couldn't tell the full story. To uncover the truth, scientists needed more than archaeology. They needed a kind of scientific time travel, a way to interrogate the victims themselves and identify their killer. That technology, once pure science fiction, now exists. The analysis of ancient DNA. And here, after nearly 700 years of speculation, comes the monumental revelation. A team from the Max Planck Institute and the University of Tübingen set out to solve the mystery once and for all. They knew that the remains from those 19th century excavations were preserved in a museum in St. Petersburg, Russia. With extreme precision, they... The authors um, had access to uh, teeth and bones from East Smithfield's burial ground here in London extracted samples from the teeth of seven individuals buried at the Karajigak Cemetery, the very site of the mysterious mortality spike. Teeth are time capsules of ancient DNA, capable of preserving traces of blood-borne pathogens for centuries. What they found exceeded all expectations. In the genetic remains of three of those individuals, they identified the unmistakable fingerprint of Yersinia pestis. 
The pestilence carved into the gravestones was no longer a vague historical term, it was the Black Death. This small community in the Chui Valley had been among the very first known victims of the pandemic, but the discovery went even deeper. When scientists reconstructed the genome of this 1,338 strain of Yersinia pestis, they saw something astonishing. This strain wasn't just any variant, it was the direct ancestor of the one that would later devastate Europe, with just one or two genetic mutations separating them. This ancient strain stood at the root of what scientists call the Big Bang of the Plague, a sudden diversification into four major lineages that would go on to spread across the world. This was the starting point. This was the source. This discovery fundamentally rewrites the origin story of the Black Death. The pandemic didn't arise spontaneously, it had a clear geographical and chronological beginning in the Tian Shan Mountains of Central Asia. The location matters. The Chui Valley wasn't an isolated corner of the world, it was a thriving hub on the Silk Road. The people buried there were part of diverse trading communities connected across Eurasia. That's how the plague escaped. The bacterium, carried by fleas on the backs of rodents, traveled along with caravans and merchants, crossing thousands of kilometers westward until it reached Europe's ports and brought an entire continent to its knees. The genetic trail is now undeniable, from a local outbreak in 1338 Kyrgyzstan to a global catastrophe. But the story written in our DNA doesn't end there. Another groundbreaking study from the University of Chicago revealed that the Black Death didn't just kill millions, it left a lasting imprint on the human genome itself. The pandemic was one of the most powerful episodes of natural selection in recent human history. Researchers analyzed DNA from plague victims and survivors in London and Denmark and discovered that individuals carrying a specific variant of a gene called ERAP2 had a survival advantage of up to 40%. Their immune systems were simply better at recognizing and attacking the plague bacterium. The Black Death quite literally selected the survivors, dramatically increasing the frequency of this protective gene in Europe's population. But this evolutionary legacy has a dark side. What once offered life-saving protection in a plague-ridden world now increases susceptibility to autoimmune diseases such as Crohn's disease. It's a perfect example of balancing selection. A hyperactive immune system was a blessing in the Middle Ages, but in today's world, where the plague no longer stalks us, it can turn against us. The victory of our ancestors over the Black Death is, in part, the reason why some of us face new health challenges today. Unraveling the origin of the Black Death is more than just solving a historical puzzle. It shows how interconnected our world has always been, how a local outbreak in a remote valley can grow into a global disaster. And it reminds us that history isn't confined to books, it's alive within us, etched into our DNA. The plague never truly disappeared. Yersinia pestis still circulates in rodent populations around the world, including in the same Tian Shan region where it all began, and still infects thousands of people each year. The Black Death is not a closed chapter. Thanks to the power of science, we now understand its beginning, but the story continues. It's a ghost from our past, an echo in our genome, still shaping us nearly seven centuries later and teaching us a profound lesson about the fragile balance between humanity, disease, and survival. But the implications of this discovery reach far beyond the past. What makes this breakthrough so powerful is that it forces us to rethink how we view pandemics and how we prepare for them. The journey of that single tribe from the Tian Shan Mountains to the rest of the world illustrates a pattern we still see today. Diseases know no borders, and what begins as a local problem can grow into a global crisis within just a few years. The trade routes that once spread the plague have been replaced by airplanes and cargo ships, yet the principle remains the same. Connectivity brings prosperity but also vulnerability. Scientists studying these ancient DNA samples uncovered something even more remarkable, something that sheds light on the future. By mapping the evolution of Yersinia pestis, they can now better understand how pathogens adapt and change. It's interesting to consider whether uh, Yersinia pestis will return um, in force in a similar way um, to what we experienced in, in the Middle Ages. It's really very difficult to say, um, considering that today we respond humans respond to the infection much better than in that time, it's probably not very likely. The bacterium evolves slowly, about one mutation every five to ten years, but each change can shift the balance between humans and disease. The fact that modern strains of the plague are still genetically related to those from 1,338 means we possess a living archive of how this pathogen has evolved through time. This is not an academic exercise, it's a blueprint that can help us predict and contain future outbreaks. And then there's the issue of the rodents themselves. 
Across the vast steppes and mountain ranges of Central Asia live marmots, ground squirrels, and other rodents that serve as natural reservoirs for the plague bacterium. These animals can carry the disease without always becoming sick, allowing Yersinia pestis to persist in an endless cycle of infection and transmission. When humans come into contact with these animals through hunting or by encroaching on their habitats, the bacterium can jump species. This still happens today, in countries such as Madagascar, the United States, and yes, parts of Central Asia, cases of plague are reported every year. The disease is treatable with antibiotics if caught early, but the threat remains real, especially in regions with limited access to healthcare. The discovery of the origin of the Black Death also forces us to consider the role of climate change and ecological disruption. Scientists suspect that the 1,338 outbreak may have been triggered by shifts in the local ecosystem, perhaps climate fluctuations that affected rodent populations or human activity that disrupted the natural balance. Today, we see similar dynamics. As the planet warms and habitats change, humans come into closer contact with wild animals and the pathogens they carry. The lessons of the Black Death are not just historical, they are a warning for the present. What makes this entire discovery so fascinating is the way it unites multiple scientific disciplines. Archaeology provided the gravestones and context, history gave us the narratives and timelines, genetics revealed the biological truth, and evolutionary biology showed how the pandemic shaped our species. It is a masterpiece of interdisciplinary collaboration, each piece of the puzzle essential to see the full picture. And yet, questions remain. Why did the disease break out in 1338? What triggered it? How long had the bacterium circulated in the region before it began infecting humans? These mysteries still await answers, and each new fragment of ancient DNA analyzed brings us one step closer to the full truth. The human side of this story should not be forgotten. Behind every DNA sample, behind every grave inscription, was a person with a life, a family, dreams, and fears. The people buried in Karajagak and Burana were not statistics, they were merchants, craftsmen, parents, and children confronted with a disease they did not understand and could not stop. Their deaths, tragic as they were, have now given us a gift, the knowledge to be better prepared. By telling their story and studying their DNA, we honor their memory and ensure that their suffering was not in vain. As we look ahead, the message is clear. Pandemics are not relics of the past, they are a constant part of the human experience. The Black Death taught us that no society is immune, that disease respects neither borders nor privilege, and that our greatest defense lies in science, cooperation, and vigilance. The discovery of the origin of the Black Death is a triumph of human curiosity and ingenuity, but also a reminder of our fragility. The past speaks to us not to frighten us, but to prepare us.